Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome one, welcome all to the second and final day of Rewired X. For those of you who have joined us yesterday, we hope you've found the different sessions as inspirational and insightful as we have. I'm Arham Shamsi, Content Lead on Innovation at Rewired. And I am Fatma Ibrahim, Assistant Manager at Expo Live Expo 2020 Dubai. Today, we've got yet another exciting agenda focused around looking ahead. With the year coming to a close, Rewired X will provide space to look ahead to 2021 and what could and should be prioritized to rewire education for, for a prosperous and a sustainable future for all. That's definitely the goal, Fatma. Yesterday, we heard from speakers and organizations across the world, across sectors, and from very different backgrounds on their experiences over the past year. Today, we'll be hearing from an even, even wider range of people on how they are planning on taking what we have learned and using those lessons to guide their way forward over the next year. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time today, we'd like to give you a brief overview of our platform as it is unlikely you have used anything like it before. You're currently watching us in the plenary room where our main high level sessions will take place. You can also find your way into four separate breakout rooms where our breakout and spotlight sessions will take place. And don't forget to visit our information booth if you have any questions. And please note that all sessions will be recorded and will be available on demand on the platform a few minutes after they conclude. And now we would like to introduce our next segment. Having connected with 2.5 billion people around the world with his project Humanity Inspired, we're delighted to have World Artist of the Year winner, Sasha Jeffrey, with us here today to talk about his initiative and how it can lead us to a more fulfilled humanity for the future of our children. I've been in lockdown here, the ballroom at Atlantis, the park. I've converted it into the largest art studio in the world. My dream is that this painting will become the largest painting to have ever been created on canvas by a single artist. I want to do that through the hearts, minds and souls of the children of the world. Within my painting will be large circular portals in which I will paste the children's artwork from all over the world. These will act as windows or portals leading us to a better tomorrow through the souls of our children. And my dream is that this auction will raise $30 million from the sale of those panels. And with that money and the help of our charity partners, we will fund vital projects within the most in need and desperate areas of the world within the sectors of health and education. One child has the power to transform a whole community. It is the next generation who will inspire humanity to greater things. Will you stand with them? One world, one soul, one planet. We stand together united. Humanity inspired. Let's paint the world a different color. We stand together, united. Sasha, you're almost on. On to you, Sasha. Hello, I'm here. <laughs> um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sasha Jaffrey, 
the painter who has just embarked on a pretty extraordinary journey. And I'm here today to share it with you all um, and to discuss a little bit about the project Humanity Inspired, my painting, The Journey of Humanity, what we've achieved thus far and what we're hoping to achieve over the next 10 years, um, but more importantly, over the next year, that critical stage where we can really create a platform to hopefully change the world. That's our objective, that's our intention. And together, I reckon we can do it. Um, so hello everyone. Firstly, I wanna say a huge congratulations to Dubai Cares, um, personally from me to His Excellency Dr. Tarek Al Gurg uh, for a wonderful initiative with Rewired. I've been watching, learning, and really enjoying what this platform has delivered uh, both yesterday and I know what it will deliver today. Um, so thank you all. Great to see you, not that I can, but great to feel your energy, your positivity and your hope for change because that, that's what it's all about. It's that intention and that, and strength, of, that strength of intention. Um, and that's, what I, that's why I'm here and that's what I'm all about. So let me explain a little bit about our project. Um, it goes back, I guess, to the fact that I live mainly between London, New York and Dubai, a little bit in Singapore, and I work out of those four regions, creating my work um, out of my studios there. And I'm in Dubai normally about three months, two to three months of the year. And I'm normally here in Dubai, February, March or October, November. And I was here in February and I was about to have a very big year ahead um, with the Tokyo Olympic painting and my 18 year retrospective world tour due to go to 35 countries um, over a three year period, really exciting. And then obviously something happened to us all, to all humanity, um, the COVID-19 pandemic hit. And I was in lockdown in Dubai and I felt something special, painful, yes, but special. I felt an opportunity that I'd never felt before. Um, and what I'd realized at that point was our world had become full of static. And I'm sure I'm not alone in feeling a little bit of dismay in the direction that we were going as a nation, as a humanity. Our direction was one of obsession with the instant, obsession with false projections of the self, um, obsession with technology in an unhealthy manner and a disconnect from the soul, that's the result. And what had become really interesting was our world had become full of static. We as humans are made of energy and our energy that we omit is made of our intentions. And sadly, we've become a humanity where the intentions with which we do things had become very low on the list. And it was all about what we could achieve, our agenda, where we needed to get, living our best life. All these things that we started to live by a code and a, a very dishonorable code, a code that led us away from the soul of the earth and led to a disconnection of the self, of each other, of our creator. And a really big problem, a bigger problem than COVID-19 could ever be. Um, and so I felt that if we're emitting this energy and the energy we emit is made of intentions, and that's how we were communicating with each other through energy as humans do. If our world became full of static, which it had due to the intentions with which we were emitting our energy, i.e. The, hand, the, the contract handshake, the gentleman's agreement, caring about the relationship, caring about the future, caring about what we could achieve together, partnerships, integrity, respect, loyalty, empathy, all these things had gone bottom of the list. And it was, what can I achieve for me? And I don't care who I hurt along the way. And there's nothing dishonorable about that, but there really is. And it was leading us down this, this terrible path. So that meant that the energy that we were emitting into the world was filling our world with static and that was stopping us communicating because you can't communicate through static if you're made of energy so at that point something very interesting happened covid19 hit and the static left our world it didn't leave one country one continent it left the world for the first time in our history and something beautiful happened we started connecting again ironically um, physically, we couldn't, but we actually started to connect again. And that was a really beautiful thing. And at that moment, I felt there's a real opportunity for change. There's an amazing opportunity. There was a beautiful silence. And I felt this silence needs to be heard. 
So I embarked on this journey to create a painting, to try and evoke that change and try and use this platform to do something really meaningful and poignant for humanity that could inspire us to move forward in a different way, in a more conscious way, and learn from this, this moment, this pivotal moment that we had. Um, but then at the same time, a lot of families were torn apart. A lot of lives were lost. A lot of people suffered financial crippling that couldn't suffer financial crippling. There was a lot of pain. And I felt we owe it to these people that have lost their lives to make a change. And if we can't do it now, we never can. So now's our moment. So I embarked on this journey to create this painting. It was called The Journey of Humanity. 17,000 square feet happened to end up being the largest painting ever created in the world. Took me seven months, 20 hours a day for seven months, about 1,400 gallons of paint, 1,200 brushes, and 20 hours a day for seven months. And I created this painting and it's called The Journey of Humanity. And the idea of it is, if you imagine the first section at the beginning here, this represented the soul of the earth. And I wanted to show what the soul of the earth might look like, might feel like, its essence, its beauty, its purity, the love, the empathy, everything that we come from, everything that we are, but everything that we had become disconnected from, what does that look like? And how can we reconnect back into the soul of the earth? How can we reconnect to each other? to ourselves, to our creator, but ultimately to the soul of the earth. Because when humanity disconnects from the soul of the earth, it's a much bigger problem than COVID-19 will ever be. So that was stage one, representing the soul of the earth. The next stage was nature, the mountains, the rivers, the trees, the lakes, the mountains rising up out of the lakes, the oceans swirling around a central heart. And that was nature. And the idea of that was to represent we're not looking after our planet too well. And I wanted to show the magic, the, majest the, the majesty, sorry, <laughs> the, the majesty, the beauty, the glory, the gift that is our planet and try and encourage us to embrace that, respect that, love that, nurture that, um, and understand its majesty and its power once we're connected back to it. So that was nature. The next section, boom, up around about here, humanity itself. And this is an important section. This was about the love and nurture of the mother, the guidance and protection of the father, as they love and guide their child through life, enable their child to feel the only three things that matter, to feel safe, loved, and brave, so they can grow their wings and make their dreams come true. And enter the final section of the painting, the solar system. And the idea of that, we as humans have become almost embarrassingly um, uh, self-important. And the issue with self-importance is that we lose a sense of humility. And I wanted to remind us of how small we are in this universe. Once we remind ourselves how small we are, we can embrace humility and with that we can become truly great. But without humility, there is no greatness. So that was the idea of that section, the solar system. And then if you imagine the painting standing up, you've got the soul of the earth, You've got nature, humanity itself, and the solar system. And then I had the edges dripping down, and imagine it's 17,000 square feet, and the edges are dripping down and reconnecting us back into the soul of the earth. And within that painting, that's where we are now, but I wanted to lead us to a better world through the hearts, minds, and souls of our children. So I put a call out to the children of the world and we received thousands and thousands of artwork, hundreds of thousands of artwork from 140 countries of the world. Children sending in their artwork to Atlantis the Palm, where I created the painting. And there I put huge circular portals in the painting, eight of them. And I pasted all the children's artwork to that layer within the portals. So when you look at the painting, The Journey of Humanity, you see where we are now, but I wanted to lead us to a better world where we can look through these portals, these circular windows, go to a better world through the hearts, minds, and souls of our children. And you really felt their soul on that layer. And then I put layers and layers on top, two, 300 layers of paint. And this, I hope, captured something special. I hope that this inspired us to say something to each other. If one guy can spend seven months painting for 20 hours a day, 
creating this painting that's 17,000 square feet, depicting the journey of humanity and the love of our child and the soul inside us all, then imagine what 7.5 billion people could do together. And at that point- Thank you, Sasha. I, you have your final remarks, please. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, at that point, I realized that I think the power of this project is to hopefully inspire us to understand this message. One world, one soul, one planet. Enough of the discrimination and the judgment. Let's join forces and let's make our world and our planet a beautiful place through the understanding of empathy and love, inclusion, tolerance, and let's help educate our children around the world. So we have an auction to raise $30 million to help these children with our charity partners, Dubai Cares, the Global Gift Foundation, UNICEF and UNESCO to raise this money to help these children have an education through connectivity through the internet, to help them with water, sanitation and health, and health, and to help them be empowered to create a better world for themselves. And that's how we can change the world together. And to help in the new path ahead for education, first we have to change the consciousness of the people. And that I think is what we're here to do over these next couple of days, is to help create a vibration of good intent to change the consciousness where we can carve a path ahead to help these children be empowered through education and connectivity. And to that end, I wanna thank Dubai Cares, my fantastic partners who I'm honored to be partnering with. And I wanna wish you all good luck for the day and I'll be listening intently. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sasha. We definitely do re need to reconnect with each other as people in order to move forward. And we really appreciate the work you're doing to support our partner organizations globally. And now please make sure to stay tuned here for our opening plenary for day one, a ministerial session moderated by Andreas Schleicher, Director for Education and Skills at the OECD. Our esteemed panelists will be discussing the experience of ministers of education around the world over the past year and their plans for the year to come. Thank you.